Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here with another live paper crafting class. It's um, Wednesday, May 5th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live on YouTube. If you're watching this at another time, um, you're probably watching the recording, but you can comment in the section below. Um, if you're commenting while we're live, you can just make sure that you're logged into your Google slash YouTube account and I don't know where you actually comment. It's different on every device. I've had people ask me and I have not actually watched a YouTube live before and participated <laughs> in someone else's. So I don't know. You guys comment in the um, comment section and let people know where they're supposed to be when they comment on their devices, depending on if you're on a phone, a iPad or whatever. Um, but welcome! It was fun to read your comments before I went live and I'm sorry for the slight delay, but there was a knock on my door right at like 10.59 and I knew it was the UPS guy so I had to run up there. Yes, it's my box. I overnighted my order. A lot of you are commenting about that, all the uh, fun goodies that, dem well, that anybody can order now because the catalog went live yesterday, May 4th, right? And um, today is May 5th, so some of us that couldn't wait expedited our orders. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to see what we've, we've got in that box. And I'm sharing with, um, my upline and I are sharing those items in our team event tonight. And then in a couple days, I'm going to go on my Facebook group. I should actually put that up here so you guys can see the name of it. That's my Facebook group. It's just called Stamp Your Art Out Group if you want to join. But on Friday uh, morning around 10 a.m. Central Time, I think I'm going to share a bunch of stuff. And I might even share some things that I've made. I don't know. Um, I've got cards, too, that I've been given. So if you want to join me then. Um, also, thank you so much. There are some comments that have been coming through. I had a big day yesterday. Not only was it uh, the, the day that the catalog started, but I reached a sales milestone that was unbelievable. Um, and so thank you for all of you commenting on that. That was uh, a really fun, fun achievement. Um, can't wait to see what's in store because of it. So on that note, I want to share. I'm so excited to share. This is a blog hop video, by the way. I am hopping with my fellow demonstrators in our all-star group. And so this video is connected to that blog post, which will go live at 5 p.m. Central Time. So we have to wait a little bit longer today for that blog post to go live if you're you know, wanting the PDF of the um, measurements and supplies and that sort of thing. You want to see photos. But um, it's going to be worth it because once you're in that post today, which would be what, six hours later from now, you'll be able to click on names of other demonstrators and see all the other projects that we create using the Ice Cream Corner Suite. So that's what I'm focusing in on today, the Ice Cream Corner Suite. And it is really, really um, a fun one. I mean, when I saw this in the mini catalog, I was like, ah, had to get it all. I'm not actually showing all of it today. I'm just showing a few parts and pieces of it but um, you'll want it all. <laughs> so I'm gonna set my um, computer up here to make sure that we are in the right place. Hang on, grabbing my catalog, and I'm gonna bring you to the desktop. So that sweet ice cream corner is awesome, very awesome. You can see I've got red R's next to a lot of these items. That's because in a couple months, this catalog will be done and items from this suite are pretty much gone except for the punch. So you have a couple months still to get in on this, May and June. End of June is when this catalog will depart. But for now, enjoy it. It's awesome stuff. We've got sprinkles in there, stamp set, a punch that goes with the stamp set, designer paper that is really pretty. I'll be showing that to you. There's ribbon and also some of these little sprinkles. Those are fun accessories that you can get. This is the new catalog that just began yesterday. And yes, we can open it up. I've got tons of things in here because I have my wish list, but it is gorgeous. It's filled with all kinds of goodies. I put tabs on it. You saw that last week when I had it closed um, that I had these little tabs on here. That is because demonstrators can get in on those uh, little tabs. But yeah, oh, I've already shared this stamp set in the past. So there's some fun stuff in here that you'll want to check out. Um, lots of new sweets, uh, new papers. Yum. This is here. This is here in my box. <laughs> but 
You'll want to make sure that you peruse that catalog. And if you do not have access to that catalog, you can of course get on and let me find it here. Where to go? Um, I have my I have my little graphics all over kind of mixed up because I was doing some other videos recently. Anyways, you can go to stampyardout.com and you can see these um, items by clicking on shop. It'll take you right to the store and then you can see all the fun goodies that are now available. I'm talking, I'm very talkative. Today is different. We're gonna do um, more of a technique kind of project today. And um, let's see here. I'm not showing you anything on my desk. Let's show the paper. <laughs> this is the beautiful paper that comes in the suite. This is like my favorite side of all the sheets. So I'm gonna be walking you through making your own designer paper in a way um, because a part that frustrated me with this, even though it's, I understand why they did this, so that you'd have these little edges and you'd have dark and light spots and stuff and you'd have lots of different colors to choose from. I didn't like the little white space that was between it when I punched out my ice cream cone scoops. So I'm gonna show you how to um, do something similar with blending brushes and with a paint, a uh, little toothbrush and some water splatters. It's really easy. I've actually shared something similar to it recently, like in the last year or so, but I'm gonna show you how to make it even more like ice cream. So these are one side of the papers that you get, 12 by 12 sheets. And then this is the other side, perfect for doing little sprinkles or you know all kinds of fun stuff. This is the perfect for the cone when you punch out the cone part of the punch. So, and you get 12 sheets, two of each double-sided design. These are the fun sprinkles, gorgeous stuff. I am wearing um, red today, did you guys notice? It's a new shirt, I don't think I've worn this one yet and it's kind of, um, well, it's got stars on it. It's red and white with, you know, white stars or whatever. So kind of um, patriotic-ish. <laughs> oh, here, you can see it better if I go like that. Um, because my card is kind of a red, white, and blue card. So I thought, why not? Let's just kind of get 4th of July Independence Day stuff going here. Um, Sweet Ice Cream is the name of the stamp set in that suite. And this is the punch that goes with it. You can see that it would punch out this shape and this shape. But you can in use it independently from the stamp set too. And of course, punch out like the designer paper pieces and stuff. So we're gonna be bringing in, oh, let's start with the measurements. Let me get you set up on the computer. I always get so excited to share that I talk really fast. Okay, hang on. Um, that's not it. That's it. Okay, here we go. And I don't know why that was highlighted in blue. This is the uh, supply list and measurements that you'll need for the cards that I'm creating today. And the measurements you'll see, um, I, I'm showing four different finished cards, but I'll only walk you through one. But the measurements are pretty much the same on every single card. I've got metric there for you, imperial measurements, depending on what size cardstock you use in your part of the world. And then I've got the supplies listed off to the left. And um, all the, like you can get the bundle combined and then you save 10%. Um, I've got in there the stamp set and the punch listed separately though if you've already got one or the other and the little item numbers are next to them for ordering. Um, I'm also going to be using the metallic mesh ribbon because it's silver and sparkly. <laughs> I love silver sparkles. I'll use the silver and clear epoxy essentials. Uh, just a little bit of those but those are new product that you'll want to check out. And I think, you know, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you some new products. I don't have them listed, but I'm gonna show you some things that you might want to use in your, um, in your finished, finished cards, um, kind of options or whatever. So I don't have anything pre-cut because we're gonna be cutting away throughout this whole thing anyways. So let's shift some things over. By the way, the prize that I'm giving out Hang on. The prize, prizes that I'm giving out today uh, for commenting, like if you are the lucky winner from the comments that are drawn. So yes, you'll want to comment during the live, um, but those are in my box upstairs. So <laughs> they're not necessarily new products, but I had to buy some new, st uh, I had to buy them new because I didn't have enough extra left over. But I do have a sample here that I'll show you. So we're gonna go ahead, actually, yeah, we're gonna score two at the same time just in case we're gonna work on another separately. I don't know 
We'll see. This is more of a fly by the seat of your pants one today. So what I've done is I've cut, I've scored it in half and I've cut it in half. Um, half of 11 is five and a half, so that's what I did here. And then I scored it down the middle, but I did that first with both of them because then you get two done at the same time. Half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So that's where I placed it to use the light blade. And then we're gonna have a couple layers. So let's go ahead and cut those layers. Now I'm not bringing it to the four and a quarter inch mark now, I'm bringing it to the um, four and an eighth inch mark. So here's four, and we're gonna move it to that spot and there's four and an eighth. And we're gonna cut and then we're gonna rotate it and instead of five and a half, we're gonna bring it to five and three eighths inches and cut. And we'll do a couple of those. Again, just in case I decide to go further on one card than another. So we've got two card bases. We've got the layers for them. And we're going to die cut. So I'll set that there. This here is for, for coloring. We're gonna color on that one. Okay. Let's die cut first. We're gonna bring in our big boss, <laughs> as opposed to our mini boss, because we have two different size machines. This is our beautiful stamp and cut and emboss machine. And have you guys used the rectangle dies? Because they're awesome. They give stitch a, a stitch look on both the negative and the positive, like the part that you cut out from and the actual paper that you cut. So you get stitches on both sides, you can see that. So the actual blade is down the middle of those two stitches. But because of that stitch, all of those stitches and stuff, they're hard to get out, it's hard to get your paper out of them. So um, you'll have to bear with me. So we're gonna use this size, which is the largest of the long, narrow ones. And that's great for like a little focal point or if a, a sentiment piece. Um, by the way, the magnetic sheets and these little sleeves that I put my dies into, I did list them in the description of the video this time. Very proud of myself. So yes, you can go to the description and you can um, check out the supply list. You can check out links that are already there while we're doing this live. So I'm layering this up. I've got, um, I've got my platform one. Oops, platform one. You can see the one there. Uh, the die adapter two plate and then a cutting mat and then we're going to put another one on top and it doesn't matter if we've got this centered or not we're just cutting out a piece that's going to become the main part of the card so as I bring that through you'll see what it does so you've got stitching on both sides we're going to separate out this piece so I could I mean if I was if I was smart and efficient I would be cutting from a piece that I could use later on in a card like that is gorgeous right okay so that's one stitch layer but this one is a bugger to get out so I kind of have to like bend and push on it and get my fingernails in there I did fun fingernails, you guys. These are the ones that I'm gonna, this is the way I'm gonna do them for my um, trip that's coming up. Super excited, Stampin' Up! is sending some of us on an incentive trip to Maui, so yay. There's the rectangle. That actually wasn't too bad to get out. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over to the comments that we had last week. So, I know, we're taking a break for just a second. I'm gonna bring you over here, um, and I think I'm in the way, so let me do this. There. <laughs> These are comments that came in from last week's um, YouTube Live, and I just wanted to say hello to all of you who had chimed in saying that you were new to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'm glad that you tuned in. Um, and then it's fun to see you know, all the different parts of the world that are represented. We had Holland and Germany and Belgium and New Zealand. Very fun. Um, oops, there's another comment down there. Fergus Falls. Yep, Minnesota. There we go. And I love how Melanie said that she was taking a lunch break. <laughs> and then up here, let's see here. 
Um, Wanda commented after I had brought out my, my stamp and pierce mat. Last time I used it under my photopolymer stamps, which reminds me I better grab it because we will need it today. And um, I, so I did, yes. <laughs> Peggy, oh, Peggy said something and Wanda said she heard you. Uh, let's see here, Melanie, what did Melanie say? Um, oh yeah, so a lot of you had commented, because I must not have said something to it, to when, when I was cutting and I pasted down the wrong side last week. Um, so I actually cut it correctly, yes, but I had flipped it and taped down the one, the, the one that was supposed to be on the right, and I did that one on the left. So yes, I had, I should have switched them before I put on tape. <laughs> I love Paula's comment because Paula was the one whose card I cased. And then, um, let's see. Oh, some of you had some helpful tips. So Beth was saying, put a little um, recipe on the inside to pull out. Uh, Pamela was talking about, and this is what I want to know, you guys. Pamela, what is plantable handmade paper? That was pretty cool. Does it like grow into a plant? That's kind of neat. And then Linda was saying how she would do a little thumb punch. So she'd punch a little circle on the back side so it was easier to grab the little card that was on the inside of the card. And Wanda, yes. And Terry, yes. <laughs> All right, back to the table. Jump, jump. Okay, um, let's start making our fun designer paper. So we're gonna grab these things called blending brushes. And I have blending brushes that are already left in the colors that I wanted to use them in. In fact, let me show you this really cool stand. This is from Stampin' Storage and it holds my blending brushes. Um, I recently painted them, I spray painted them. I have yet to put uh, a latex paint on these holders, but um, they're going to be like the exact black that I use in my room or the exact white. So I have one of each, but because of where they're sitting, um, I have one black and one white. And if you're gonna buy anything from Stampin' Storage and paint it, make sure that you do a spray paint first and that will seal the wood. And you'll wanna do a couple thin layers of that to make sure it's covered. And that'll protect the wood for that when you do the latex paint on top. And I do have a link for the blending brush holder in the description of the video too. So let's bring in these two colors here. So we have Poppy Parade and Bermuda Bay. And I'll just start with Bermuda Bay. In fact, let's grab a card base and let's work with that first. So I'm gonna fold on the score and give it a good crease with my bone folder. And we're gonna go ahead and do a really, really light, smooth, um, transition of color with the Bermuda Bay ink and the blending brush and I'll zoom in a bit here. So when you're working with blending brushes and you want to have a smooth color transition you get the ink on there by just kind of moving it around like this and then you're gonna take and you're going to do it on your scrap paper to get some of that darker color removed so you start with a light color. The lighter the better for doing a smooth transition. And then I am going to have this piece here positioned in this spot. So I know I can start in that spot with my blending brush down um, because the darker color I wanna have coming from that spot. And as I move around that spot, I'm slowly doing a very gradual um, dark to light blend on my cardstock. This is our basic white thick. Now when I, when I bring this up to the camera, you can see that that definitely was the spot where I started because it has a darker little spot there, right? Another idea is to start off your cardstock and then blend in as you go if you're not gonna have an area that's covered up. Let's say you're just gonna have that whole uh, landscape of that card, that whole surface, um, one nice blended color, then you could start off and slowly come in. But I know that that's gonna be covered up, so. And we wanna have that blue just peeking out a little bit so it's nice and soft. And there we go, just a little speck of dust there. 
So when I put that over it like that, you can see I've just got this nice little faint spray of blue color behind it. Now let's bring this piece in. For ice cream cone scoops, just have at it. Just go for it with the blending brush. Do you see how I'm making it messier? Um, because you're gonna be punching them out and you kind of want that whole um, dark versus light look. There it is, a little piece of lint. I'm getting lint all over my table. So you can see what I did there? That's more splotchy because I wasn't worried. I wasn't trying to remove some of the dark ink first. I just wanted to push, put it on down there, right? In fact, let's do this. Um, actually, I don't have to rub off, do I? Let's go in there and do some, some crazy little marks even, okay? That'll make it really, really like, wow. <laughs> Not smooth at all, Rachel. That is like... A mess okay so we have a mess in the middle we have a little bit smoother and then we have ultra smooth so that's blending brush stuff and now we're gonna move to the other side of the paper and we're gonna do a little bit of the poppy parade so the poppy parade brush we'll bring that in and we're just gonna go right onto the paper because again we're just getting some scoop paper ready okay <laughs> so there, see, oops, fingernails are painted, can't lift it up. So there we have a couple colors blended onto our cardstock ready to go. I am gonna do one more, and I would probably do these all on separate papers, like I would have a blue paper, and then I would have a red paper, and then I would have just a little scrap of the cinnamon cider. So again, Bermuda Bay, Poppy Parade, and cinnamon cider these back in my holder. So here we have cinnamon cider and I'm just going to peek here to make sure I'm doing this right. So we're going to go ahead and do, and I probably should have done this color on the edge, but we're going to do kind of a, a deep color, but I want it smooth. So I'm just going to keep starting off and then come in and darken it. So we're trying to get a nice rich brown. We'll trim that away so we can punch it out easily. So I think, well, we'll do a little bit more. We want it nice and dark. Okay, so there's our cone color. Again, I would do these on separate papers. So if you wanted to mass produce, which Rachel likes to do, if you wanted to mass produce a bunch of ice cream cone scoops, cones, that sort of thing, this is the way to go, um, to do it onto that kind of paper. Now, if you're doing just the, the designer paper, what I would do is make sure that you've cut, and here, hang on. Um, grabbing a small piece here. Okay, so make sure that you've cut a little scrap that will work for you you know, cut around it, cut it in strips or something, and then you can come in and get, see how there's like spots that are wasted, or you could come in like this and punch. In fact, we'll do that one this way. And then you can come in here and you can punch. Now you can use that white too. So if you're, you know, if you're okay with using white, you get that look. So it looks like a, a multicolored scoop of ice cream. But it did, it did kind of bug me, you know, there was just times where I couldn't use certain spots of the designer paper. But this kind of a look here will give you a card that looks like this. It's nice and basic. It's a, a great beginner card. The only thing that's pretty advanced in here, um, actually there's nothing advanced because you know what I did here? I took and I cut this paper to, and I think I've already put that away, but I cut it to one and five eighths. One and five, yep, one and five eighths by three and five eighths, which is about the same size as the die. So you wouldn't even need a die cutting machine. So you could reproduce a version of these cards just by doing a, a, a quick cut like that. Here's the metallic mesh ribbon. There's nothing behind the ice cream cone layer. It's just the basic white on basic white on basic white. 
but that's kind of a nice clean look. You could put some rhinestones in there if you wanted to fancy it up, or you could even add some of these sprinkles to the top of your ice cream cone, which I'll show you on one of my finished cards. But all I did was designer paper, designer paper, um, what else? And punch. Didn't even use the stamp set on it. I crossed out the stamps. So from that suite, designer paper and the punch. And then of course the paper and the metallic mesh, mesh, mesh ribbon. But you could obviously use these stamp set images on the front of the card, on the inside. I didn't stamp any of my cards with messages this time because I wanted to be able to save them and use them around the 4th of July. Um, but yeah, that is one way to go. And where is that? Grab this here. This is that designer paper I told you is perfect for punches. If you cut skinny little strips of these, then you can cut, uh, then you can punch several at once. So see that? Now let's go ahead and take and cut, using that as a guide, a strip. And how would you come back in, Rachel, and punch again while well, you flip it over? You flip it and, you, oh, hang on. Pull that off, flip it over, come back in, and see how I'm making the most of that paper? So you just keep taking and pulling one away and punching. And then you can get lots of these little ice cream cone cones out of a strip. All right, we're done with the designer paper sample. Let's go on to the stamp sample and then we'll bring in the blending brush one that I just did. Okay, so for the stamp sample, let's grab some scrap cardstock here. And for this one, oops, we're gonna put that over here. For this one, we're gonna bring in the stamps, okay? So we've already mounted them onto clear blocks. They do get a little stained when you use them in reddish ink or something like that. Um, some people swear by stamping in Versamark ink first, which kind of helps get into the pores of the photopolymer stamps. And then when you um, clean that off and ink it up again, they say that you get less red. I haven't had experience with that. Maybe I'm too good of a cleaner. I don't know, <laughs> but I've had, um, I haven't seen, you know, a big difference on it, but give it a try. It might work for you. So we're going to bring in the stamp pads again, and we'll start with our poppy parade. And we're just going to ink up, oops, I'm too zoomed in. We're just going to ink up our scoop okay now you can stamp it once for a nice bold color or you could stamp it off and then stamp again or you could keep on stamping just to get lighter and lighter color inks um, so yeah stamping off a couple times and then going on to your paper so you can get different variations of that red um, we'll do Hang on, gotta clean off my stamp. Okay, we can do blue the same way, where we stamp off and then stamp onto our paper. Or you can use, you know, really dense, in, you know, intense color if you wanna do that. Then we've got these little speckles and you can either do you know, like full strength speckles on your, on your ice cream scoops. You can stamp off a little bit so it's not as intense, you know. So you can get those looks from just the stamps. So you don't have to worry about having the designer paper if you have a budget, right? You've got your stamps. The thing with this though is when you punch them, and I do like this look, but you of course have the white outline that you didn't have with the designer papers when you punch those out, okay? So I guess it depends on the look that you're going for. Let's just um, quickly cut. And we'll punch this one. So then when you stack them, you'll get that white outline, 
you know, on the layer too. You see what I mean? So that will give you a slightly different look. Now, if you wanted to do um, just stamps and you wanted a colored background, you could take that speckle stamp and you could kind of do it here and there, you know, really light speckles on your background and then put your white layer on. Another fun stamp image and a reason why you'd want to have this stamp set e anyway, even if you want to go with the pre-made designer paper idea that I'm going to show you next, is because of this little drip stamp, this one here. And of course the sentiments and all the other images, they're just awesome. So I highly recommend the stamp set anyways. But you can then take and, <laughs> fingernails aren't working today, stamp um, some drips coming off your ice cream, right? Of course I would have put that underneath it. But then you can get a card like this. So this card has the, you know, stamped off, so lighter colored, speckles on two of the layers, nothing on the blue. I have stamped the cone, I'll show you that. And I've also got some little speckles behind. So I've got some blue faint speckles on the background, the base card layer here. See that? And then I've put the metallic mesh over the top. The drip is coming down from the cone. And to do that cone, you have lots of different options for that. So let's bring in our cinnamon cider colored ink, which matches that brown from the designer paper. And we're gonna stamp with our cone stamp. And I'm going to stamp this um, just the way that you would expect it to go. Actually, that was not a good stamp image. Let's try that again. Okay, so I've got that. Notice that it's light, the stamps have that light and dark look to them. That's on purpose. <laughs> and then we'll put this little grid image right on top. And they're, they're clear stamps, so you can see through them and line it right up. And that's one way to do that little grid image. Another way is to go the opposite direction, but start at the top, start at the very top, and this will give you a more full look. So I'm gonna start at the top, and I'm going to stamp that on top like that. Sorry. And then I'm gonna turn it the other direction, and I'm gonna line up the lines and stamp it again. And on my finished one, I've lined it up way better than this. This is not very well lined up. But you're gonna come up with more of a covered area, and then when you punch it out, it's gonna look fabulous, trust me. Maybe not if you're gonna use this background stamp, maybe if you use you know, your pre-brown um, kind of blended brush look paper. That would probably look better because you have these coming outside the white now. Okay, so let's move on. So I've got two different cards than we've done so far, these two. Okay, and now here's a third option. So the third option is the one I'm gonna actually put together for you now. So let's go ahead and punch some of this blue. Oh, I forgot to do something. Okay, hang on, Rachel, you're getting ahead of yourself. I love sharing and I get so excited. Okay, so let's close these up and let's bring in this awesome tool. So this awesome tool is a paintbrush, or a paintbrush, a toothbrush, just an old toothbrush. And I've got a little <laughs> medicine cup of water and we're going to dip it in there and we're gonna tap it. And then we're gonna use just something hard. So you can use like your, um, take your pick tool or you can use the scissors or whatever. And you're gonna tap it so that those little drips, and I probably need a little bit more on the brush, so that those little drips are coming down onto the surface of your cardstock. And you see that big drip there? Yay! That's a fun one. Okay, so you're gonna get the big drips on there. We'll do it here too. There, and then you can come back in after you've got some of those big drips. 
Then you can come in and you can flick and that will give kind of a fun little speckle look. Okay, so do you see what's happening here? A little bit of magic. <laughs> fun. All right, what can we do while we're waiting for this? Um, let's do, let's do the assembly. Let's do that. So while we're waiting for this to dry, we're gonna go ahead and get these layers um, put together here. <laughs> Um, we're going to cut something first because <laughs> Rachel put it on the wrong layer. Okay. Okay. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. There we go. Now we have it on the correct layer. This is supposed to be on the smaller layer that goes on your card. And here, look at that. We already have a folded card, pa card base. <laughs> and we'll bring in our dimensionals. I use the edges, by the way. I hope you guys do too. Flip this over and we'll put one in each corner. That's all you need. It gives the illusion that your layer is popped up and it does not add as much thickness when you're going to mail it. Okay, so we're going to put this on here. So we have a nice little small um, little border all the way around with the layer underneath. So see how it gives the illusion that it's all popped up, but it's not. So now we can take and add this layer. <laughs> A lot of you know what I did wrong already now too. Um, we can add this layer with dimensionals and it will push down, but not be like doubly thick. Cause here's the dimensionals underneath the layer, this blue layer but the, the dimensionals will go here and it, it, so it'll feel like it's one layer thick, if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, yesterday was a busy day for me. Can I just blame it on that? <laughs> I have not even had time to read some comments yet. I had a, a really nice day. Okay, we're taking this off because Rachel made a mistake. We have to bring in our mesh. Let's grab our mesh, metallic mesh ribbon. I have a full roll ready to open up, but we're gonna use up this one here. So it's beautiful stuff. It actually came out in our fall mini catalog, the one that was just before the spring one, and it stayed current, um, and it was with Halloween stuff. So you can see how it looks like, kind of like, um, oh gosh, uh, web, spider web stuff. So we'll take our seal adhesive and we'll put just a little bit on this edge and we'll put a little bit on this edge and then we'll do a wrap. So we'll look at it from the front, make sure it's straight, wrap it around. And I know now we have stickies there. So then the next thing you'll want to do is you'll want to trim off some of these edges and put those over the top of where you have your adhesive coming through, okay? That will help cover that up. But still, it's on the outer edges so that when you put this piece on dimensionals here, it's still gonna feel like one layer thick of dimensionals. So now let's add that to the front of our card. <laughs> okay, that's gonna go here. And then this piece we'll put on with dimensionals as well. There they are. I've got a messy desk. Are you proud of me? This is hard for Rachel. <laughs> so this will go on here. And a lot of you are saying, but, but Rachel, what about this, the little drip? Well, I actually did that wrong the first time, and the drip is so small that you can stamp it while it's sitting up on dimensionals, I promise you. But yeah, stamp it first. <laughs> Let's bring this back in. Here we go. We're going to punch some fun little cone layers, and you see how we can get, you know, multiples. In fact, let's do this. Let's cut this into strips. Because now Rachel can get lots of cone, lots of ice cream cone scoops 
from this layer. I'm going to do one more here because I really like that one there. And I want to I want to grab that one. Okay, so back to this. So I've punched and then I can flip it over because you see how it curves kind of that way. So we're going to try to get three out of this whole piece. So then I can punch in here and then I can flip it over and I can punch again. Hold on to it with a post-it note. Shove it in there. So I got three out of a piece like this when on the designer paper, I might have only had two little colored splotches on that size piece. Okay? Didn't have to worry about the white space. On this one here, though, I want to just grab that one because that's just a fun, fun scoop of ice cream there. Doesn't that look yummy? All right. We are just punch crazy. Let's pull in this card again, and let's start our, where did that go? <laughs> this is why Rachel usually does fun folds because things get lost with techniques. There's, the, oh, that paper that had the brown on it. We need that. <laughs> it's here, it's here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. It's gone. It's not here. I'm lying. So I'm gonna cut this and just use this one. Seriously, Rachel, where did that go? It's not on the floor either. <laughs> this is the least organized of all of my lives, right? You guys are feeling for me. It's on this table. I just have no clue where it went. All right, so we're gonna punch this one out because we need something on this card and we do not have our pre, oh, ha, huh, there it is. Our pre blender pen, our blending brush. There we go, there's our scoop. <laughs> All right, bringing this back. And we're gonna do that crisscross back and forth look. So we're gonna stamp it, and I'm gonna zoom in because this is very far away from you now. And we're gonna rotate it, and we're gonna line it up. And as we do this, you can see that it kind of fills in the edges a little bit more of our cone, a little bit more, because I was not perfect on that one. But that will get, layered onto these scoops. I've got a couple of these scoops here. So let's start by flipping these over and we'll add some seal adhesive right to the bottom portion of the scoop. And I think we're gonna do red, blue, red. So this one will go here. This one will go here. And I like that I put this one on top because this one has some fun little speckles. And then that one will go here. And you can kind of, you know, adjust if you need to before you finalize and press it down in place. But now this whole thing will just go up on dimensionals. So we'll grab those dimensionals again and we'll stick those kind of where the papers connect with each other. And then one <clears throat> towards the base of the cone. And we'll put that here. And then we're gonna grab our multi-purpose liquid glue. We're gonna do a couple little dots of this white glue right like that. And we'll pull in these fun embellishments from the suite with our little gummy end of our take your pick tool. We'll grab those and we'll add those to, come off the take your pick tool, please. Okay, I might have to add them with my snips. There we go. Okay, so these are going to embellish our cone as if they were tiny little candies. 
Do you know how hard it is to do um, these sprinkles on live YouTube? <laughs> they are tiny little things. They are. Okay, so there's that. And then the last thing that I want to add is that stamp of the red color as a drip. So we'll stamp off and we'll bring that image. In fact, we're gonna stamp off twice and we'll bring that there. And then we'll bring in our clear and silver um, epoxy essentials. We're gonna grab the clear sheet and we're just gonna pick up one of these driplets they look like water drops, and I'm going to put that over the top of this drip here and kind of maneuver it and then push it down. And now we have a wet drip of ice cream coming off that cone. We made our own designer paper. We've got some candy little sprinkles on top, a hint of metallic glittery silver on there, and of course the smooth blending brush ink color. You can make this card any card you want. It can be birthday thank you. Um, because of the fabulous stamp set that coordinates with it. But let me show you a third card. That one I won't be walking you through, but at least I want to show it to you. So that one is more intense. Oops, too close to the camera. There. So that one's more intense. That's where I used um, and went kind of more crazy with my blending brushes and my stamps. And I actually did multiple colors next to each other on this top scoop. So you can get that real artsy fartsy look that you could get from, you know, the way the designer papers are. You know, you can really get kind of crazy. So, so, <laughs> grab those, grab that paper again. So for that, the way that I got that little scoop is simply just putting color down really close together again not being not using a blending brush typical ways of using it you know what I mean just doing this and then adding that color or that the water droplets in there and when you punch it out you're gonna get that amazing effect believe it or not it's true my goodness what are some other fun ombre-ish kind of looking stuff that we have that's new we have these beautiful bags, so I could totally see, you know, adding some ice cream cones in coordinating colors to our new in-color gift bags. So they have that graduated um, dark to light look, obviously. This pink one would be really fun. So would the purple with the ice cream. And then we have this fun uh, glitter paper that is... Um, dark to light but it's got a glittery look to it and i think that would be fabulous for fourth of july or independence ice cream cones too because you have this beautiful red and this beautiful blue in there you've also got a yellow and a purple in there and of course you don't want to omit our rainbow glimmer paper that would be perfect for doing ice cream cones too let's bring those cards back in take a peek at all of them get the mess out of here we got quite the mess, Rachel. <laughs> I'm not a mess girl, am I? You guys know me. So let's spread these out so you can see them a little bit better. So those are the different variations that I had to share with you. Simple um, stamps. And then, of course, making your own designer paper and getting really messy with the fun splatters. Different, different options for your patriotic-ish, ice cream card-ish stuff. So for our prizes today, and I, I'm going to draw the name for last week's first, but I just want to show you what you're going to get if you are a prize winner today. You're going to get a couple blending brushes sent to you. So they're beautiful. If you haven't tried these yet, they did debut in our spring catalog and they are just awesome to use. You'll wanna get a collection of them, but this will be great to either add to your collection or to start your collection. Um, so you'll get those. And then I've also got, and I think, there they are. 
I've also got extra catalog tabs. Um, so, because demonstrators can order these and you get eight sets and basically a set is a sheet of each. They're in multi-language, so you don't get a ton of tabs. The ones that I have on my catalog that I shared with you fit along the, so the edges like that. Okay, so they fit here. But then I took the blank ones, because you do get a few blank ones, and I cut them in half and I put my own little titles on them so that I could um, add a few more tabs. So I got those all from one sheet, or I'm sorry, from the two different sheets, because there's the blank ones in there that I cut in half. So you would get a sheet, uh, a set of those uh, um, along with your blending brush duo. You get two of those. So what was prizes last week? Prizes last week were, if I can find them. Oh yeah. These were the prizes last week. So you get a quarter pack of the designer paper from the hand penned suite. And then you also get a pack of the genial gems. So I'm going to pull up the name of that winner. And then um, Trisha will do a little drawing for our two live winners today. There it is. Okay. So let's move this over here. And our winner Oh, we have two winners actually. You know why? I have two winners because one of the winners I noticed in the comment is from outside the US. So, um, Br Brigida is uh, our first winner and she said metric measures, she lives in Germany. So I will give her a prize that I can send to her via email. And then Patty Grana, um, she's actually one of my club members. Patty, yay, way to go. Um, you will get the designer paper and Genial Gems little packet that I just shared. Back to um, me checking out to see what Trisha picked for our winner. Um, what Trisha picked? Who Trisha picked? We have two winners. I'm seriously distracted today. Uh, our two live winners are Suzanne Bensley and Diana Maher. Maher? Mahar. Mahar. Yes, Diana Mahar. I think that's how you say it. So congratulations to you two. You are going to be able to get two blending brushes and a set of catalog tabs. Congratulations. Um, what else did I want to mention? I mentioned the blog hop in there. Um, my order came and remember to visit and I'm going to put that back up there so you can join me. Um, I have a Facebook group called Stamp Your Art Out group. A request to join but make sure that you fill in or answer those uh, membership questions because I don't allow people in unless they've answered those membership questions. Um, it just makes me know that you're not a robot or spam or something. So answer those. Um, but yes, join me at my, my website also so you can check out all of these projects that I've been sharing on YouTube Lives. Links are in the video description. This blog post will go live at 5 p.m. So in five hours from now, you'll be able to visit my blog post. You'll be able to see close-up photos of these cards. You'll be able to see the measurements and the list of supplies. And that PDF that I shared on the screen that some of you may have screenshotted is going to be available to download there too. Plus the blog hop. Don't forget about the blog hop. Um, I think that's it. So I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great rest of your week. We will see you next week. And then I'm actually going to be on a trip after that. So join me next week because I'm sure that I'll have a ton that I'll want to share before I take a, a week off, right? <laughs> um, so join me on May 12th at 11 a.m. Central Time and just watch for that link to go live on my YouTube channel a few days before, maybe a couple days before. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I ask you to do so. Um, it's a fun way to get notifications so that you know when I'm going live or when I've posted something. Also, please, and a lot of you are so good about this, you say it for me. Remember to give me the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And sorry if I was so scatterbrained. I'm not a technique-ish kind of person. Like, I do techniques, but I typically do fun folds in these things. So, boy, my gosh, my desk is a mess. It was crazy. I got thrown off a little bit. But you guys are good with that, right? Thank you for being so gracious to me and thanks for joining me. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye. <laughs>